All right, let's take a look at Redshift. So Redshift is a data warehouse and it's generally really expensive. So it's not something that you're going to want to launch uh, day to day here, but let's see how far we can get with it um, just by running through it. So what we'll do is go ahead and create a cluster. And again, you can just watch me do this. You don't have to create, uh, you don't have to create one yourself. Uh, so free trial configure for learning. That sounds good to me. Uh, is free for a limited time if your organization has never created a cluster. Well, I rarely ever create these. So when the trial ends, delete your cluster to avoid the charges of on-demand. Okay, that sounds fair. Um, so here we're going to have two V3CUs. It's going to launch a DC, a DC to large. So let's look that up for pricing. Show me prices, please, please, please. Um, I think it's loading right here. Okay. So I don't know how much it is, but I know it is not cheap. And down below we have sample data is loaded into your Redshift cluster. That sounds good to me. Ticket is the sample data. Okay. Ticket sample data. Redshift. I just imagine they probably have like a tutorial for it here. They do right here. And so, because I want to know what we need to do to query it, right? If we can even query it via the interface here. So the admin user is AWS user, um, and the password is going to be capital T testing one, two, three, four, five, six, exclamation. And we'll hit create cluster. Oh, cool. We can query the data right in here. So that's what I wasn't sure about, whether we would be able to just query it in line, because before you'd have to use Java with J JDBC or an ODBC driver and download the jar and it's not as fun as it sounds, of course, but it looks like we can query data once the data is loaded. So that looks really good. I guess we can pull data in from um, the marketplace. So that's looks pretty nice too. And I guess we could probably integrate it into other things like QuickSight because you probably want to adjust your data over there. Uh, again, I usually don't spend a lot of time in Redshift, um, but it looks like it's a lot easier to use. I'm very impressed with this. So I don't know how long it takes to uh, launch a Redshift cluster. I mean, it is 160 gigabytes uh, of, of, of storage there. It's uh, even at the smallest, it's pretty large. So what I'm gonna do is just stop the video and I'll be back when uh, this is done, okay? Okay, so after a short little wait here, um, it was a lot faster than I was expecting, but uh, it's available. And so it looks like here it says to query the sample data, use Redshift version two. So I'm gonna click that. And I'm sure there's tons of buttons to get here. And it'd be great if it just populated the query for me. Um, it doesn't, but this looks really nice. Really nice UI. I wonder if it has like some existing queries. No, <laughs> that's okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this query and see if we can get this to work here. Never found out what those prices were though. Okay. And what we'll do is hit run. I like how there's like a limit of 100, but here it has that. So we'll go ahead and hit run and see what data we get. So relation sales does not exist. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, we'll go up here. So most of the examples in the Redshift documentation uses uh, a sample database called Ticket. This sample, uh, this small database consists of seven tables. You can load the Ticket dataset by following the this here. Okay, so to load the sample data from Amazon S3. Okay, so I would have thought it already had the data in there. I could have swore it would have. Dev, public, tables, zero tables. Okay, so I don't think there's any data in here. And so we're going to have to load it ourselves. I really thought it would have added it for us. Uh, but let's go ahead and create these tables and see if this is as easy as we think. So we'll run that, create that table. Cool, okay. We got it down here. We'll run that, we'll just run each at a time. I think there's seven of them, so. Data already exists. Okay, that's fine. Event already exists. It's saying all these tables exist. Maybe I just wasn't patient. Hmm. Oh, 
okay. Um, interesting. All right, so maybe we'll go back and uh, run that query. Maybe we just had to wait a little while for that data to load. Run. Okay, so you know what? I think it was doing this for us. If, if, the, if it did not create it for us, we would have to go through all these steps, which is fine because we're learning a little bit about um, uh, uh, Redshift, but um, uh, it looks like we just had to wait there. So it looks like you would run those, you download that, you use the copy command to bring it over there. Um, it looks like you can do all of this via the uh, this interface here and we've done a query, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, I imagine you probably could like save it or export it. What if we chart it, what happens? Okay, you can chart it. That's kind of fun. Can we export it out to, oh, just we can save it. I thought maybe it could export out to QuickSight, but I, I suppose you'd rebuild it in QuickSight, eh? But yeah, I guess that's it right there. So that's pretty darn simple. So what I'm gonna do is make my way back over to Redshift because we are done for this example. And we will go over to clusters here and I'm gonna go ahead and delete my cluster. Delete. Create file snapshot, nope. Delete, delete the cluster, and there we go. So I'm pretty sure that will succeed, no problem there. And we are done with Redshift and Redshift is super expensive. So just make sure that thing deletes, okay?